What's up everybody, this is the all new 2024 Dodge Charger Daytona and 2025 Dodge Charger Daytona four door. And in this video, I'm gonna give you an in-depth look at all the details of these vehicles. We're gonna look on the inside here of the two door and we're going to go through all the details, all the specs we know so far. And uh, I mean, as you can see overall, it's a really impressive and very cool thing. So let's dive in. All right, so here are the three that we have on stage to look at today. Uh, we have the four-door one over here, which we'll get to more in a second because that's coming a little bit later here in early 2025. But first up, here's the two-door one. So they're starting off the lineup here with a Scat Pack and an RT version. The RT is the lowest trim, at least for now. And then the Scat Pack is the top dog for now until the Banshee most likely comes uh, sometime here uh, next year or sometime in the future. But so as far as the styling here, it's really impressive how close they kept it to the concept. It is pretty much the concept with very slight tweaks. Side mirrors are a little bit bigger. Uh, the taillights are a little bit uh, tweaked, which I'll show in a second here. But right up front, I mean, it looks so mean. The coolest design component, in my opinion, is this R-Wing that we have here, which is done for aerodynamic purposes because, again, these ones we're looking at here are electric. There is an internal combustion engine version coming. I'll get to that in a minute, so stay tuned for that if you're someone who uh, is excited about that version. But as far as these ones, they all have that for better aerodynamics, and all chargers are going to have the new logo there, which is a really cool touch, and you have the full-width LED lighting. I really like the little reflectors there as well. It's a very mean look and just I'm just so impressed that they kept this so close to the concept. And um, so yeah, you can see it's a nice, nice long silhouette here. We'll go over to the red one here because it's a little better lit. This is a scat pack. And uh, you can see the massive wheels on this thing, the massive brakes. Biggest brakes ever for any kind of Dodge vehicle, including even like Ram products and stuff. This is even bigger than Vipers. They're 16 inch rotors, six piston Brembo brakes in the front, four pistons in the rear. And uh, we also have the wide tires on the Scat Pack here. 305s in the front, 325s in the rear. And uh, you can see there are the Eagle uh, Sport all season tires. And uh, for now, this is the sportiest tire that we're gonna see, but you can see the, I love that the fun Scat Pack badge carried over and looks like it's a slightly new interpretation and is a, a nice little touch and love this deep red color too. Looks so, so good. Um, but yeah, that R-Wing I think is really gonna stand out because you can see how the hood dips down here and rises up. It gives you, you know, greater dynamics without making it look like a melted jelly bean like Dodge liked to say in the presentation here. And I totally get it. It's just so cool. Looks like, unlike any other EV on the road. And uh, you know, look at that long silhouette. Really does harken back to that 68 Charger, which as someone who loves retro design cues, I mean, it's very modern looking, but it has a clear link to the past, which I think is great. Going out to the back here, you can see the taillights. So these ones aren't lit up quite as much, uh, but I'll show the uh, taillights on the four door there. You can see the racetrack LED lighting that they have and um, a really cool look. But even here with them turned off, it's uh, still looks great. Again, very familiar. Looks similar to, you know, prior gen charger, but, uh, you know, just a new wider look to it. Love the spoiler on the back. And the one thing you might be picking up on, which is something that also carried over from the concept, is the hatch. It actually has a huge hatch. It's 38 and a half cubic feet with the rear seats uh, folded down. Lots of space. And also there's even a frunk. Uh, it's not big, but, you know, you can fit a little duffel bag in there or something small. And, uh, you know, it's actually super practical, way more practical than a Mustang or any other, you know, normal sports car, or sports coupe, honestly. You know, having that huge hatch is going to be great. The back seat also is bigger. We'll hopefully check that out here in a second. But, uh, you know, it just, it's a long car. It's big, it's imposing, it's impressive. These are good, definitely going to make a statement on the road here, especially in all the fun colors that Dodge awesomely offers. Um, and you can even get a, like a full glass roof here on these. It's a big, big panel here, long roof. And um, so as far as the mechanical stuff, before we dive into the interior here. So starting off with the RT here, it's going to have 456 horsepower to start, but for the launch versions here, they're going to have the Stage 1 kit, which is going to be direct connection kits you can get from uh, the dealer and the factory to boost the power. Uh, and so this one's going to have a 40 horsepower boost. So all of these will be shipping with 496 horsepower for the RTs here. And they have 404 pound-feet of torque, whether or not you go for that direct connection package. And you can also see the slightly smaller brakes here you get on the RTs. Still nice big brakes, though. 
and uh, still has those Eagle Sport tires on it. Uh, and so for those, the specs are a 4.7 seconds 0 to 60, 137 mile per hour top speed, and um, you know that's going to be again the entry level point. We don't have pricing for any of these yet, although production will be starting on these here this summer, mid 2024. They're saying so these are coming pretty quick. Again, it's it's a 2024 model year vehicle, so coming fast. A lot of people are debuting 2025s and Dodges as well with the four door and the ice versions. But as far as this, it's an actual 2024. So coming very, very soon. And uh, as far as the Scat Pack version here, the power stepped up very nicely. So we have, again, starting off, I believe they mentioned a 590 horsepower version, a 630 horsepower version. But these ones are all going to come with the Stage 2 Direct Connection Kit for 670 horsepower and 621 pound-feet of torque. And these ones are going to be doing a 3.3 seconds 0 to 60, 134 mile per hour top speed on these ones. Uh, but these ones, it's faster than a red eye wide body. Um, for It's got 11 and a half a second quarter mile time and is, uh, you know, again, we're talking about a scat pack that's as fast as the old Hellcat red eye, wide body red eye. So, I mean, <laughs> That's the enormous leap that we have with the electric propulsion here is just way more power um, even on these lower versions. And again, we know that more is coming down the road, but uh, it's it's really, uh, you know, a huge, huge amount of power, again, just to start here with the early launch additions. And uh, other fun tricks here are that they're going to have drift and donut modes. Um, the torque split, it is all-wheel drive, by the way. All of these are all-wheel drive as standard. Now, for um, the top uh, Banshee version, they mentioned there's going to be be a totally off verbal drive version but even for these ones um, they mentioned in the presentation it might be able to it, it might be mostly off but it's still gonna have a line lock mode a launch control mode and again that donut mode as well so in addition to also drag modes and all the other various modes you've come to expect and so um, that will uh, give you all the fun of you know the old verbal drive versions but now you have the all-weather capability of the all-wheel drive as well and I think that's gonna be a really nice improvement especially for those who live in places where it's not always sunny and beautiful and so now those people will also be able to have the extra practicality of the hatch the extra practicality of the elbow drive it's really i think going to open up the market for these cars and make them a lot more doable for a lot of people that maybe would have loved one before but never were able to justify it for some of those you know compromises you had to make in the past now there's no more compromises and i think that's awesome and again if you want to have the extra practicality of the four doors here's the four door version and this one is coming early next year they're saying quarter one of 2025 for these four doors and uh, i can't show you the interior in this one unfortunately yet because it's a little earlier in its pre-production stage compared to the uh you know two-door versions here but this is coming and it's great because we were all wondering you know what's happening with the four-door charger that's what the charger has previously been and they also did mention in the presentation when someone asked about challenger seem like there's no plans for challenger name as of right now at least not that they're willing to say at this current time so don't wait for a new Challenger. Sounds like we're going to have Charger 2-door, Charger 4-door, and, uh, you know, that has all your bases covered there. You know, they both look fantastic. I love that they were able to retain that same 68 character and translate it to a four-door and still give you that awesome profile. Again, having the hatch still. Other electric vehicle components that uh, are obviously very important is the battery. So it has a 100.5 kilowatt hour battery, um, but out of that 93.9 is actual usable capacity. It's a 400 volt system for these ones. 800 volt will be coming with the Banshee version, which will have the higher performance. But even with the 400 volt, it's actually pretty impressive with the recharge rate. They're saying it's gonna have a peak recharge rate on a DC fast charger uh, with 350 kilowatt uh, output it'll do 183 kilowatts for the peak charge rate so better than average these days and they say you can do a 20 percent to 80 percent charge in these cars in uh, just over 27 minutes which again very competitive uh, you know these days and pretty good not the best out there but certainly very good in that 800 volt one should be you know much much faster as well other fun things uh, thanks to the electric propulsion here is that you now have power shot in these so that'll give you an extra 40 horsepower for 15 seconds and you have to wait 30 seconds then you can do it again um, and that is factored into the peak power so it's assumed that you're going to get 40 less horsepower if you're not actively using that power shot mode not like you're going to be you know hurting for horsepower in these in any you know capacity but you know those 
advertised numbers are with that power shot activated so just keep that in mind but it's something you can do while rolling you don't have to be launching to do that uh, it's just like a little nos button almost <laughs> you know for those of us that love fast and furious it just gives you a little boost again 40 horsepower is not wild but should be a noticeable nice improvement and so it's great that you have that the other really cool thing is we got to talk about the frax fratsonic uh chambered exhaust which these have and so it is actual exhaust pipes that are attached to a sound generator and they haven't demoed it for us because they say it's not finished yet and they don't want to show it off until it is completely done and ready so no one gets the wrong idea but um it actually has outlets there Again, a little dark back here behind stage but you can see the actual cutouts there and you also see the daytona badging there but they say that this fratsonic exhaust is actually able to get as loud as the old hellcat for an ev um and so you know we'll have more details and obviously sound clips uh, later on hopefully here pretty shortly considering we're only a few months away from these starting production but um that's going to be very exciting to hear you know the early stuff that we've seen on the concept car and stuff sounds very cool and stuff that dodge provided in the teaser images sounds cool but we will have to wait and see what the finalized 100 percent done sound is but i think it's gonna be really cool you know i think you know it has a stealth mode if you don't want that if you want it to be a silent ev you can have that but for people who you know still enjoy the sounds of gas-powered engines i think that this is going to be a really cool way to incorporate that fun and also that audible feedback of what the car is doing and how it's responding to your inputs and a couple other important ev things to mention the all-important range numbers so uh dodge really said in the presentation like they didn't care about trying to get the most range that's why i mean yes you have the you know r wing there in the front but it's really not you know they still wanted to make it a blocky cool looking thing you know the wide tires the big brakes all those things hurt range they didn't care they straight up said we don't care but you know for the range it's still really good so i think that's why they par partially didn't have to care because you still have for the rt version 317 miles of range here in that one 268 i also saw 260 some places in the press release but between you know something in the 260s for range on the scat pack here and again with a pretty quick recharge rate you know that should be fine and i mean again those are just the estimates we will see you know final numbers and you know out in the real world what kind of range we're actually able to get out of them because i mean it is still a really aerodynamic you know pretty low vehicle and so i'm hoping that maybe that could even be overperformed we'll see but other things here so curb weight is the same on both because they use the same electric motors um it's just that you have you know the higher tune there and the uh, you know unlocked capability of the extra performance here for the scat pack as far as the motors go so um as far as both of them curb weight are 5838 pounds and um obviously again more than the previous cars that's why we got bigger brakes and the extra grip and all that but uh you know hopefully that'll all be offset we'll have to wait and see later this year when we drive them you know how it all feels and uh, other things here so they all have uh, fully independent rear suspensions as well you have monotube shocks here on um the lower versions and even on the scat pack it's monotube unless you go for the track pack track pack does have adaptive dual valve dampers and so that's going to give you you know the adjustability as far as ride quality and you know making it as stiff or as soft as you want and that's great they also have mechanical limited slip differentials so you have that you know great power delivery there in the rear um, they didn't say anything about power bias as far as i think um, you know the rear motor is slightly more powerful but i think they're pretty evenly matched um, so i'm sure that it'll be pretty 50 50. they also said uh it's going to be a pretty close to 50 50 weight distribution as well again thanks to being an ev so better weight balance should also certainly help your handling prospects as well so we will have to see about that all right so let's hop inside the uh, charger daytona here so see the awesome ambient lighting uh which you get here on uh, these upper trims it's 64 color ambient lighting but i love the the detailing you have here on the door it's hard by the way it's uh, not final again this is pre-production so keep in mind what you're seeing here might not be a final representation of you know what you're going to get you know for the production version here but um you know it should be pretty representative hopefully of you know pretty close to what it will be but i mean it's so cool and that was another concept car touch that they were able to actually bring to reality another really cool touch is you have a hoodless uh, gauge cluster here and it's a 16 inch digital gauge cluster i think that is bigger than basically everything you know the standard stuff in the industry is you know a 12 12-inch uh, display is about as big as you get usually for a driver display, but we got a, you know, a giant 16-inch display here. You also have a 12.3-inch uh, digital or 12.3-inch uh, infotainment system here as standard uh, across the board. Now the 16-inch screen is not standard. You'll go down to a 10-inch screen in the lower trims. Um, but uh, it's awesome that you have that available because again, no one offers anything that big, honestly, and it's super cool. Um, 
scat pack here is a normal pedals here and uh, looks like seats have a lot of adjustment too. I don't think there's a ton of detail yet about all that. We can see all the lumbar stuff looks like bolstering and these seats are uh, seats that you get here on these upper trims. Uh, the scat pack has these. You'll see the seats in the uh, RT are a little less aggressive but all of them are all new seats and you can get the Alcantara. You can also there's a black there's also a demonic red color for the interior here that you can get if you want uh, but I mean really cool with the you know pass through there and uh, you know, it should be a really, really comfortable seat. Let's hop in and see how it feels. So again, all this stuff is early pre-production, so that's why you're seeing, you know, stuff on the screen here. It's I don't think I can play around with it too much, but uh, there's different views for the drive modes. Um, and this screen is running Uconnect 5 over here, so it's the same stuff you're used to from other uh, Stellantis products. Um, so it's you know, really great with the customization with all the widgets and things you can you know, switch up on it there, and uh, you can also have like a one-touch thing. There's a power shot mode here, but there's also customizable drive modes where it'll change the ambient lighting. And the ambient lighting, by the way, also changes based on the driving you're doing, the mode you're in. It's going to be very dynamic with the with the lighting, which is really cool too. And otherwise, you know, just a few buttons here. Glad you see still a normal row of HVAC controls here, which is nice. And uh, just a few buttons on here for some safety stuff with the launch mode, the all-important launch button there, and uh, you know, good amount of storage here too. You know, for practicality stuff again. Since I like mentioning that in my videos, you know, you have a good, good bin here. Looks like you got double wireless chargers. Uh, I love this new pistol grip shifter. It's really a new interpretation on the same, you know, kind of old uh, style, but, you know, in a fresh take here and looks really cool. I actually think that's a really, really unique. I haven't encountered a shifter. It's been like that at all, so that's cool. Huge power button here is fun too, and a little spot for your fob, I'm assuming. And then some cup holders there, and... Uh, see the uh, key looks like it's going to be pretty nice similar like the ram key that we've uh, seen recently but um, center armrest here and yeah, it's a pretty nice space again I apologize about the lighting here but uh, looks like it's got a regular USB A jack in there still actually in a normal power outlet uh, so your USB C's are going to be up front here um, and uh, this one does have that glass roof so you can see that here again a little bit hard with the lighting but it's a beautiful Huge single piece of glass, a very cool look. You don't have to get that though, you can still get a solid roof if you prefer. Steering wheel also is uh, just really cool. It's got a flat bottom and a flat top. And there's also a giant head-up display you can get here on these. Uh, this one doesn't have it on currently, but I'll show a picture of that. And uh, really cool, you have that available. You have little paddle shifters here on the back of the wheel, which obviously don't do any shifting, uh, at least not on this. The Banshees are going to have a two-speed transmission, uh, but these ones are just one speed uh, for these 400-volt cars. Uh, but the little paddle shifters here are going to be for your regenerative braking. So you can play an active role in how the car is regenerating, which is really cool. It's a feature I love in other EVs that offer it. And it's really great you have that. You also still do have the typical uh, little buttons, rocker switches here on the back that you're used to in other Stellantis products. I'm glad those have carried over. And uh, just, yeah, a really great wheel. Feels great. Nice 9 3 grip. 10 and 2 notches are great. You know, the doors are big, obviously, for this vehicle being as large as it is, but you have nice big pockets there and buttons. You also see that you don't have any typical door handle. You just have this button here, and that opens the door there, and uh, yeah, all your memory seats, all the luxury features you want here. Uh, I believe you know heating and cooling and all that is available for the seats and all that as well. But uh, I love the way this dashboard is set up with the contrast stitching and all that lighting. It's just a really cool look. So I'm not able to actually hop in the back seat because this one's still a little early with the production and all that. But what you can see here though, without moving the seat or anything, I mean, I don't have the seat set up for where I would sit, you know, being 5'9", but you can see that there still is going to be more space there than what you had in the old Challenger, I think. So um, definitely an improvement. Uh, and again, we will have to wait until we can climb over this a little more to get a little more detail on how that is. But of course, if you do want the most amount of space, you're going to want to go for the four-door version, which is going to have more. I'm also not able to show the interior in that one but uh, you know it's just assumed obviously being a four-door that's gonna give you a little more space and it's great that you have that option still and so if you are concerned about you know using this as a daily vehicle and you're wanting a little more space you know you have that option there uh, with the four-door version but I'm gonna co come over and just show the RT interior here briefly uh, again same basic stuff on the inside but you can see the seats are a little less aggressive a little more you know ordinary looking uh, but you still have the same great steering wheel, same you know paddle shifters, and this one still does have the 16-inch screen upgrade, so that is something that's available here in the RTs as well. And so is that again standard 12.3-inch screen. This one's you know not lit up with the ambient lighting currently, but I believe that's something that's available uh, as an option on these as well. But uh, 
This one also uh, doesn't have the roof. So this is a look at, you know, if you, you still have a black panel here, so it still looks like the glass roof. So on the outside, it's still gonna look great whether or not you get the glass roof, but it's awesome that this one, you know, gives us a look at, you know, what that is like without it. I don't believe there's a shade for the glass roof, but again, I'll have to wait until we play around with it a little bit more to say for certain. And uh, so these are going to be available this summer. They're gonna be built in Windsor, Ontario. And uh, so yes, we will uh, hopefully get more info soon and hopefully be able to drive them here just sometime in the next few months hopefully and uh, the four-door and the internal combustion engine versions are going to be coming in the first quarter of 2025 and uh, so uh, one other thing to mention is that the Daytona badging is only for the electric versions the non-electric internal combustion engine versions is just going to be called the charger and for that uh, version we don't have it here to look at today but um, it's going to give you uh, 420 horsepower in the standard output version and then 550 horsepower in the high output version version of the Hurricane 6-pack is what they're calling the motors. The 3-liter twin-turbo inline 6 engine is going to be the only ICE option for these, but it's awesome we have an ICE option at all. We're seeing this is a rising trend now of companies offering different options as, you know, they recognize that not everyone wants the same thing. And so it's great. You can still have one of these awesome chargers. It's going to be available in the four door as well. Have them all available with internal combustion power if that's something you want. You just have to wait a little longer. That's first quarter of 2025, just like the four door versions here. Um, and for those, by the way, they're going to be running an eight speed automatic transmission and uh, they're going to have all wheel drive again as standard, even for those internal combustion engine versions. But those ones will have a dedicated rear wheel drive mode, they said as well. Um, so that'll you know make sure you retain that that you know character but again having that additional capability of the all-wheel drive is going to be great and uh, so yes and then we just have Banshee coming at some point uh, a couple months after the internal combustion engine version they said so maybe summer to fall of 2025 that's just my speculation they just said a few months after the internal combustion version so uh, you don't have to wait and see about that but that one's gonna again have the 800 volt system way more power the two-speed transmission obviously probably more handling gear and all that as well so we'll have to wait and see about all that stuff other fun things there's like a drive experience recorder now in these that you can get and that's going to give you um, kind of uh, similar to what you see in some other vehicles that are performance vehicles that have you know a forward-facing 1080p camera that'll show you your performance at the track and uh, you'll be able to review that footage there's also you know you're gonna be able to start these up with your key of, as a phone and you know do the whole app thing if you'd like as well in addition to just the regular key fob and uh, lots and lots of other you know cool little details here but that's all the high level stuff and uh, so let me know if you have any questions in the comments below there about these vehicles more than happy to answer any questions you guys have but otherwise Thank you all very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on these chargers and uh, Charger Daytonas in the comments below. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Take care.